1953 electrocution of Julius and Ethel Rosenberg, the young couple who were convicted of selling atomic bomb secrets to the Russians. Their sentence triggered violent protest and the execution became one of the most celebrated media events of the era. Crowds gathered outside the prison waiting for a reprieve from the Supreme Court or President Eisenhower. But the order never came and the Rosenbergs became the first civilians executed for treason in the United States. Rabbi Irving Koslow was the prison chaplain at the Rosenbergs' execution and has been present at 17 electrocutions. Koslow would counsel the condemned man for years before his execution. From this experience, he has a rare insight into the psychology of the condemned inmate and death by the electric chair. The major difference between dying in a hospital and dying at the chair is a major difference was that in a hospital, a patient never knew the exact moment they might leave this world. Whereas you, when you put an electric chair, you knew in advance that, at least the Sing Sing, that Thursday night, 11 o'clock, you would be in that chair, and a minute or so later, you'd be dead. Executions all followed a similar sequence. The day before, the condemned man is moved from the death row cell block to a group of cells near the electric chair, an area known as the dance hall. Here, final preparations are made, including shaving the convict's head. Kozlo would comfort the inmate through these final preparations. On Thursday, Kozlo would spend the entire day with the inmate and accompany him until the end. I would spend time in that cell with him. And all day long, we'd prayer, a conversation, what exactly was going to happen in that execution room, uh, life after death, a variety of topics were covered. Comfort, uh, was it painful? To me, death was moving along slowly but surely. At about 6 p.m., he is offered his last meal. For last supper, they're given anything they want at 6 o'clock. Not one inmate or one person that was ever touched any of that food. They could order steaks and ice cream, and they sent it all to the, uh, back to the wings they came from, back to the death house inmates. Finally, the excruciating wait draws to a close and the guards come for the condemned man. By the time a knock on the door came, which is about one or two minutes to 11, as far as I was concerned, that man or woman was half dead. Really, he was no longer as articulate or as responsive as he had been Wednesday and Thursday, you see, all day. And I would tell him, look, follow me. There'll be two correctional on either side of you walking down this corridor, which is maybe 20 feet, no last mile, 20 feet of corridor. And as we got close to the door, it would swing open. I told the man, it's going to swing open. You'll be taken by the two correctional officers. Don't make any comments, because any statement you make to either the officers or to the witnesses or reporters who may be there, will be misinterpreted and won't be accurate. I, I know that. There'll be two, in, two men inside beside a wooden chair. They'll seat you down quickly. They're going to put something over your eyes. You'll be electrodes will be tied to your head and to your leg. It'll be very quick. I'll be right in, I'll be as close to you as I am to you now. I'll stand right in front of you. I'll be on a rubber mat, but I'll be there and I'll offer some prayer, an appropriate prayer that we offer for a person who is going to leave this world. And that's all I can do. As soon as they're strapped in, there's a motion to the electrocutioner and he would lower the electrode. That was the first shot. Then another shot. It's 
doctor would run over and open the shirt and test him. He said, this man is dead. Uh, I'd seen death uh, many times before, both as a rabbi in the army and so forth. So I wasn't shaken by death. But it is a different experience because I knew at that moment that man was going to die. And, uh, and uh, it's something you never forget. In 1965, the death penalty was abolished in New York State. 30 years later, it was reinstated. But future executions will be performed by lethal injection. Sing Sing holds the unusual distinction of being the only prison with a railroad running through it. Undoubtedly, more than one escape attempt has been inspired by the hope of hopping on board. The most notorious and bloody breakout came in April of 1941. Charles Miguel, John Waters, and Joseph Reardon escaped through the prison hospital, killing a guard and later a local policeman. The daring attempt had been planned for more than 10 months with the help of several accomplices on the outside. The plan was set in motion on March 22nd when three guns were smuggled into the prison strapped underneath a milk delivery truck. Waters hid the weapons in the hospital where he worked as an orderly. Miguel was a prison trustee who had access to tools and rope. He was also an expert locksmith. He made keys to a steam tunnel that ran from the hospital basement outside the prison. On the night of April 13th, Reardon and Miguel faked illnesses and checked into the hospital. Waters slipped them the guns. At 2 a.m., the men made...